Right, that was the gameplay reveal teaser that was posted last night by the Battlefield social accounts. Today, June 13th, is the Microsoft event, and gameplay of Battlefield 2042 is going to be revealed for the first time. And based on just those few snippets alone, we can actually get quite a lot of information. Hopefully this gameplay trailer will give us a real idea of what this game is going to be like. The reveal trailer was fantastic, but it wasn't real gameplay. And this will be the proof that we need to know what Battlefield 2042 is all going to be about. But I'd still say the open beta later this year, when you first get your hands on this game, that will be the decider for most people. But seeing actual gameplay later today, that's going to help a lot of people decide if this game is really for them or not. But let's have a look at these images. I've, I've gone through the trailer and picked out the best ones that I can. First one, it's a really short snippet. We have a soldier here looking out the side of a helicopter and it's looking at an attack chopper that's flying past. It's clearly an Apache. Just for reference, this is the hourglass map that we saw in the reveal trailer, but this time we're playing on the map during the day, so we're not seeing the neon glow of all those skyscrapers. We get a really nice look at the soldier's weapon in first person, although it's not immediately obvious which one it is because the profile of it on the screen doesn't reveal too much, but judging by the weapon HUD in the bottom right-hand corner, this might well be the LWRC SMG 45. It's got that long stick magazine underneath. It's got the same looking lightweight stock on the side. And as you can see from the image, it's got a grip on it too. And then in first person profile, you can see the red dot on top and then a zoom optic underneath. It's like dual optic kind of thing. Secondary, it's almost impossible to pick it out from the HUD, but it also appears there are three other slots on the weapon HUD over in the corner here which is likely one of the specialist gadgets that's tied to the soldier specifically. Then you have the second gadget slot that you can pick, I think, from a complete variety of whatever you want to take. And then maybe the soldier trait alongside that, the specialist trait. Who knows at this moment? It's very unclear because you can't really see it. And then along the top of those boxes is a really thin green line. That looks like the health bar. And then above that, you've got the ammo widget, 46 bullets in the magazine in the gun, and 185 in reserve. Doesn't look like we're getting attrition in this Battlefield game, which, yay, fantastic. I don't have to deal with not having any ammo anymore. And then the vehicle seat info is on the far right, just above that. The minimap on the left, that's quite interesting. The game mode info is tied into the minimap this time, as opposed to being an element at the top of the screen. That's a big change from the Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 days. We're essentially going back to the Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 style system. You'll notice that the sector information is at the bottom of the minimap, and then blue is going to signify friendly control, and red will be for enemy control. And also, there's an arrow asset being used to show which of the sectors the player is currently in, and as you can see from here, it is the B sector. Now, if we go back a few frames, the glitchy overlay does come cover some of the stuff that you can see, but you actually get a clearer view of some of the soldiers that are on the ground that you can barely see in the compressed social media images. You've got several of them running across the sand dunes as well as a tank over here on the right-hand side. You can also see that a B1 objective marker sits over the top of the gun profile. That's going to be part of the 3D HUD. That's an icon that's telling the player the objective is behind them. This next image here, it's barely visible in the video. There's only a few frames of this actually visible, but it gives you a very nice look at the first person attack chopper view for Battlefield 2042. This is the AH-64GX Apache Warchief. You can see that just over on the right hand side. You can just about make it out above the health bar. Minimap is on the right, again showing now we're in Sector C. We are in enemy territory. And then the HUD in the middle of the screen looks to me very reminiscent of Battlefield 4, showing the altitude of the chopper on the right and then the speed in KPH on the left. Now, what's really interesting, we've mentioned attrition once already and perhaps that not being part of the game because of the amount of ammo that that soldier had. On the ammo widget on the right for the helicopter, you're going to see the infinity symbol there. Now, that says to me vehicles are going back to the way they worked in Battlefield 4, having infinite ammunition that you'll likely have to wait a short interval for for it to refill back into the vehicle. Now this is opposed to the Battlefield 5 way of doing things where you have to move away from the action and go somewhere, completely rearm from a station, and then come all the way back to the fight again. 
Not many people were really fans of that, and it really slowed down the pacing of vehicle gameplay and made everything very, very defensive. So I'm a fan of this. If things are going to be more upfront, more chaotic, more attacking, I think that's going to work pretty well. You can see the primary and secondary weapons on the attack chopper down in the bottom right. I'm not 100% sure of what they are, but you'll probably be looking at some kind of rockets as a primary and then maybe a missile as a secondary, something like that, alongside countermeasures, which looks like a flare here. And then lastly, we have that repair icon. Maybe this again is the trait of a specialist. An engineer focus one would be a good thing to take if you are going to jump into an air vehicle. Perhaps they can repair quickly or, or something like that. And then lastly, we get this third person view of the same attack chopper facing off against another attack chopper. And you've got jets flying through the scene in the background. It's just all out battlefield action for a couple of seconds. Again, we get to see the HUD, a look at what the health bar does when your vehicle or your soldier health is getting lower. It goes down to orange and then in another frame just further ahead, it eventually goes to red. And just in general here, you get a much, much clearer image of this map, although it's still not super high quality, of course. You can actually see some other things. There's a player on a rooftop behind the action and you get to see the HUD element and what that's going to look like. It seems to show the distance away that that player is. It says 320. So if the distance between this heli and that skyscraper is 320 meters, you can tell how big this map's going to be. This shot just gives you an idea for the scale of Battlefield 2042 maps. The play space that you're going to have, the skybox size for all the air vehicles. This map looks absolutely huge. And it's not even the biggest one that will be included in the game when it launches. That goes to Breakaway, which is the Antarctica map. Plus, you can play this map at night as well, because of course this is the Neon City map when it's all lit up. And there's a huge sandstorm that rips through this map as well. There's so much going on here that, that, we, that we don't even get to see. But Hourglass does look really, really impressive. That's just to say the least. And this little teaser, despite only having a few frames in it, of actual gameplay, it sent my hype levels through the roof. I cannot wait for that gameplay trailer later tonight. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure you either tune into that Microsoft event later to watch the gameplay, but I will be streaming it here on YouTube, hopefully, if I haven't planned something that conflicts with the time. If not, I will do a gameplay breakdown shortly afterwards and we'll pick out some stuff that's really important. So look out for all of that and I'll catch you very soon.